Good morning, friends. Thanks for joining me for morning prayer. We are uh, doing the celebration for the ascension of Christ. That's the time of year where we're, we're looking at that. And so we join together for our morning prayer taken from the Book of Common Prayer as organized very, very easily for us through Mission St. Clair. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God have, God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us to eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ the Lord has ascended into heaven. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. From 1 Samuel chapter 2, 1 through 10. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she has many children, is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust, and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the word, the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversary, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. You were dead to the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved, and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Most merciful God, who blessed your servant Helena with such grace and devotion that she, that she venerated the very footsteps of our Savior, grant us the same grace that, aided by her prayers and example, we may also always behold your glory in the cross of your Son, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On Friday mornings when I pray that prayer, the thing that sticks in my head, I think the clearest, is I'm praying that I might receive my daily bread, and I'm going to fast, at least until three as we've been doing since this whole thing started. Fasting has kind of opened my my understanding a little bit of it. What does it mean to ask God for my daily bread? To give thanks for the food on my table, of course, but there's a little more to it than that. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us today what we need to survive. What, what is the bare minimum that we've got to have? And we have faith that God is already in the process of, of handing it to us right now this morning. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always, day by day. We bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Excuse me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our our Lord, your Son. Amen. To my humble supplication, Lord, give ear in acceptation. Save thy servant that hath none, help nor hope but thee alone. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you've promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may best be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. We begin this day of fasting, and we do so together. And we do so to draw ourselves closer to God and even to one another. But we do that because there are so many things that are out of our control. And so this isn't something we now control. This is just something we can do to stay focused on what is important on the daily bread that today we receive from God. Go in peace. Have a blessed day. See you again at noonday.